Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Taha Andrewala, and I'm a manager here at CAQH, and I'd like to thank everyone for joining today's session. Um, I, I will be serving as moderator for today's webinar, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to today's session on an industry roadmap for provider data. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to take a moment to review today's agenda. First, we will review um, a few housekeeping island items, followed by in an introduction of today's speakers. Second, we will mo mo be moving uh, into providing an overview of the Provider Data Action Alliance and its objectives in drafting an industry roadmap for provider data. Third, we will dive into the roadmap itself and provide a summary of each of the roadmap sections. Lastly, we will discuss the ways the industry can participate in the roadmap feedback process and demonstrate their support for the roadmap. Next, I'd like to mention a few logistical items. A copy of today's slides will be emailed to all attendees and registrants in the next one to two business days. Uh, portions of today's webinar will be devoted to collecting feedback on the roadmap in response to, uh, on some of the dialogue from today's discussion. Uh, we will use, ask for feedback through specific polling questions during polls, the question and answer, cho and answer, answer choices will display on your screen. To respond to the poll, select an answer choice. And, uh, and as you go through some of the polling questions, you, you may see that some of them will ask for you to type in feedback to kind of support your answer. Please do please um, type, uh, provide feedback by entering your feedback into the questions panel on the right hand of the screen on the GoToWebinar dashboard. Further, towards the end of today's session, we will have some time for Q&A and open discussion. Attendees can submit questions or comments during these discussion periods one of two ways. You may either press the raise the hand button icon on your GoToWebinar dashboard and we will open your line. Or you may submit questions or comments by entering them into the question panel on your dashboard. So next, I'd like to thank our speakers for joining us today and hand the call over to the speakers to introduce themselves. And Atul, let's start with you. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, my name is Atul Patil. I'm Managing Director for Product and Strategy at CAQH. All right, um, let's uh, move on to Michael. Good afternoon, I'm Michael Dowling, the Chief Administrative Officer of Monitor Care Management. Uh, Monitor Care Management is a subsidiary of Monitor Health System. We provide care management and MSO services to an 11 hospital system located in Bronx, New York, and the lower Hudson Valley of New York State. We have uh, close to 6,000 physicians in our network, and we provide support for value-based arrangements supporting close to 400,000 uh, covered lives. Part of my responsibility is to run the credentialing and provider information operation for the system, and we do medical staff uh, credentialing, delegated credentialing with all of our payers uh, in the network, and uh, a robust network provider data management function. Hi, good afternoon. My, my name is Zig Brzezinski of Cigna Healthcare. I'm an operations director at Cigna. Um, at Cigna, we have roughly 800 to 850,000 providers in our in our system. My area of responsibility is provider data management, demographic management, as well as provider pricing management, as well as credentialing. Um, and uh, we, I, as you can hear, um, Michael and I have very similar roles on the different sides of the fence, but uh, I think you'll see it like, melds well together here. That's all. All right. Thanks, Vic. All right. So to kind of kick off today's call and kind of introduce the Provider Data Action Alliance, I'd like to pass the call over to Atul to begin the discussion for today. Okay. Great. Can we move to the next slide? Yep. Okay, so thank you all for joining. Uh, as by way of background, CAQH convened over 100 different stakeholders about a year ago uh, at what we were calling the Provider Data Summit uh, to discuss challenges and trends with provider data across the industry from a variety of perspectives. Uh, those challenges were summarized in a white paper as well as in an executive summary, both of which are uh, are posted on the CHUH website uh, that provide critical background and, uh, and context for the work that uh, we've since done. Uh, one of the, the key recommendations coming out of uh, those documents and critically the discussion at that September summit was to 
the need for an industry uh, roadmap. And that roadmap would help guide uh, various stakeholders across the industry for how they could uh, collectively uh, work together to solve provider data challenges. Earlier this year, CAQH convened a group of individuals from diverse stakeholders across the industry uh, to create what we're calling the Provider Data Action Alliance. And this group uh, was tasked with developing that roadmap as outlined as requested by the summit last year. And what we're looking to do is have this group uh, create a, a draft document that represents a shared vision uh, for how the industry should proceed, and then critically, a roadmap uh, by which that vision can be achieved. Next slide. Okay, great. As we get into the uh, details of today's discussion, what you will see is our roadmap is structured in four main parts. Uh, first, the underlying issues that are influencing our uh, thought processes, a set of core principles that are necessary to help us shape the vision, an actual vision for what we think the, uh, the provider data ecosystem should look like, and then uh, lastly and importantly, uh, a set of strategies by which that vision can be achieved. <coughs> Excuse me, let's go to the next slide, please. As you can see here on, on slide eight, uh, the Action Alliance uh, consists of representatives from all across the, uh, the healthcare industry. Uh, in addition to providers and health plans like we have on the phone today, we had representatives with deep experience from uh, government stakeholders, uh, from HIEs, as well as uh, the health insurance marketplaces, as well as a number of other stakeholders like accreditors and licensing boards and so on. Uh, these individuals brought tremendous uh, depth of expertise and, and perspective, uh, and uh, also importantly, committed significant time uh, to work with each other to produce uh, the draft roadmap as it stands today. Should point out, uh, as it says here on the slide, uh, these individuals are at this point speaking on, on behalf of themselves and not their organizations. Uh, we do look to them as uh, industry experts. Uh, because of the backgrounds that they have. <clears throat> the way we've worked over the past six or seven months has been uh, in phases. As you can see on the timeline listed on slide nine, uh, at first we articulated what the underlying issues are and some potential guiding principles for our work, our subsequent work. Uh, that information was released uh, out for comment uh, back in the late spring. Uh, that comment was then uh, collected and reviewed by the Provider Data Action Alliance and helped shape the next phase of work, which is where uh, we rolled up our sleeves and, and spelled out at least an initial draft for what the vision of the provider data ecosystem could be, as well as some initial strategies by which the vision could be achieved. Uh, those elements were then released for comment. Uh, that comment was received and incorporated into a final draft uh, that's been out for comment now for the last month or so, and uh, what is what we will be focusing on today. Our intent is to take the feedback received over this past uh, four to six weeks, incorporate that into the document so that we can finalize the roadmap and, uh, and publish. As you can see here on slide 10, uh, so far we've received feedback from close to 50 different organizations. Um, in addition, uh, those, those comments uh, span a variety of stakeholder groups, which we're very encouraged uh, to see. Our goal is to have as comprehensively reviewed a draft as possible uh, so that we can uh, speak with confidence that this vision does truly represent the best uh, shared path forward for the industry as a whole. Uh, today, uh, we have close to, actually, close to 400 individuals registered to participate in this, in this webinar, 
Our goal is to collect feedback from as many of you as possible, either uh, through the chat mechanism that Taha represented or described, uh, or if we're able to get to you through the, the live uh, discussion at the end of today's call. And then if we're not able to get to you, um, do please encourage you to uh, submit comments uh, through the website, uh, and we'll provide some more details about that at the end of the call. Okay. So with that, let me uh, turn over to Michael, and you can walk us through uh, the first two sections of the roadmap. Great. Thank you. The first task the Alliance tackled was identifying the underlying issues with provider data and articulating core principles and a vision for improving the provider data ecosystem. The Alliance considered underlying issues that were negatively impacting provider, the provider data ecosystem. We identified four primary drivers. First, there are very few authoritative provider data sources whether they're considered primary source or designated by an authority as sufficiently accurate for an end user or an aggregator to rely upon. We also uh, examined that there are conflicts that exist depending on the use case of the data that is provided. The second major issue is that there is no single set of standards for provider data exchange and there's variation across the industry regarding the display and use of the same data elements. The differences between the intended and actual uses of an element can significantly impact how that element is collected or maintained. One of the prime examples of this is provider or office location, which continues to create persistent problems across the industry as it can be used for multiple uh, reasons and functions, billing, mailing, official place of business, or patient-facing services. Third, the, the data changes frequently and must be reported to multiple entities. Many providers uh, on the uh, Alliance reported that they are subject to repeated, redundant, and conflicting requests for data. Finally, providers have not been engaged in this data dialogue about the use and reporting of their data. Much of the burden of responding to requests and pushing out changes falls upon providers and their office staff. Every burden that's placed on a provider reduces that provider's ability to deliver care to patients. We also recognize that historically, provider data discussions have been driven by regulators and accreditors, leaving both plans and providers to react to the change that are being imposed upon them. We can go to the next slide. The industry um, group has also identified four core principles that we believe are necessary to support a healthy provider data ecosystem. I'm going to spend a few minutes unpacking each one of them. First and foremost, the, the care and attention of providers must not be wasted. Providers and their teams should not have valuable time taken away from the time they spend with patients to handle administrative tasks. We recommend that an update or a correction should need to be reported once and that that change should flow through the entire ecosystem. A very important corollary is that there should be no wrong door to make these changes. And when the changes are reported and propagated to all stakeholders through this uh, um, uh, mechanism. The suppliers of data should also be given accurate and timely information on how it is being used and if any conflicts have emerged with that data. The second principle underlying a healthy ecosystem is that the provider data ecosystem must be flexible and adaptable. Automation has brought a renewed emphasis on quality provider data that can be used without requiring extensive interventions. The system should be capable of normalizing or correcting discrepancies without time consuming outreach to providers. We also recognize that provider data is an evolving concept and a healthy ecosystem must be designed to be forward looking without wasting investments on short term fixes. The third principle is that a solution must be pragmatic and focused on near term business realities. The effort must address the most pressing business and consumer needs 
and appropriately set expectations for data quality. The administrative burdens and costs of updating, transmitting, and publishing provider data must be reduced as much as possible. Some progress must also be achieved immediately with a longer-term plan in place to continuously improve the system. Importantly, though, we must accept that provider data will never be perfect. There is an irreducible minimum amount of data that will inevitably be out of date or incorrect due to human error or time lag from when a change happens in the real world to when those changes are reported and published in data sources. Finally, the provider data ecosystem should be industry governed and standards based. We discussed that the action of regulators is one of the most successful ways to create industry consensus on action, but regulators currently lack the funding, cross-agency coordination, and other resources necessary to launch an industry-wide uh, vision. Industry leaders, uh, an industry-led effort should be transparent and incorporate a full range of viewpoints, including those of government and consumers. Public payers, as well as federal and state agencies, should play a key role in helping to implement the industry vision. I think at this point, I'm going to take a pause and turn it over to Taha for the first of our polling questions. Thank you, Michael. <clears throat> so for our first polling question, um, this question asks you, um, do you agree with the core principles outlined by the Alliance on how to create a healthy provider data ecosystem? So I'm going to take a launch the poll, and you can choose yes, no, or yes, but you, you may think that other principles um, should be considered. And if you have any recommendations, please enter those in, in the comments box. So I'm going to launch the poll. And I'm going to give the audience uh, um, about 45 seconds to, to answer. Well, you all are answering that question. If I could just reiterate a couple of points that, that Michael made. Um, there was a lot of discussion among the Alliance members of uh, these underlying challenges. Uh, two that I thought were particularly interesting was a common uh, feeling of the, the unnecessary uh, waste and redundancy in collecting and maintaining and verifying the, the accuracy of, of the same information from providers, from health plans, and all other stakeholders. Uh, those costs are um, a significant drag on all of us and uh, ideally could be optimized. Uh, the second was that I think there was wide uh, consensus that the pace of change is actually accelerating. The pace of change in data is accelerating. So there are more changes coming through and those changes affect an increasing number of business and care delivery processes. Uh, so not only is the volume of data increasing, the implications of, uh, of those changes are also increasing as well. Are we ready Next. to yep. present? I'm going to close the poll and present the results. Right. I'm going to display the results. And it looks like the um, majority of the audience members, about 86%, indicated yes, they agreed that uh, of the core principles outlined by the um, Alliance. And 12% agreed with, um, yes, they agree with the, all the principles, but they um, have some considera considerations on um, so maybe some other recommendations. And 3% said no. So um, please, you know, for those that um, indicated um, yes, the other should be considered or no, please type in your comments so we can collect those and we'll open that up for discussion later later in the call. That's right. And again, if uh, if you prefer to provide more substantive comments uh, offline, uh, you're welcome to do so online. Uh, I'm sorry, on, the, on our website, and uh, that will be open for the remainder of the month. Also, uh, very willing and, and eager to talk with any of you if you'd like to have an offline discussion about some of your, your feedback. And uh, please reach out to us at CAQH, and we can help facilitate. All right. So I'm going to turn the call back over to you, Michael. Great. Thank you. Um, on slide 15, um, we've got laid out uh, that the Alliance has established a vision to guide us in creating a healthy provider data ecosystem. 
the governance model that we discussed needs to include stakeholders from every part of the industry, especially the provider community. This group needs to be both nimble and responsive to stakeholder views. They need to collaboratively develop and maintain the standards necessary to drive adoption. We also believe that a subset of essential and common provider data elements should be identified as fundamental to the ecosystem. Each element should have explicit and well-defined uses and clear distinctions should be made between similar data elements which have incompatible uses. We also recommend um, that a supportive infrastructure be developed with some aspects of centralization and the capability for the propagation and aggregation across the various systems supporting the industry. This infrastructure would include a central database that can aggregate, store, and serve as an authoritative source for the fundamental data elements. The system would also include a portal to facilitate a clear view into the fundamental data set for producers, maintainers, and users of provider data. Finally, we recognize the need for a staged approach to moving the industry toward a new paradigm in provided data that addresses the most pressing business needs through development of, a co of cooperative processes and a flexible shared infrastructure. I think with that, I can turn it uh, back over to Taha for the second polling question. Thanks, Michael. So for the second polling question, I'd like to ask the audience, um, do you agree with the vision articulated by, by the audience and the one that Michael just kind of briefly went over on how to create a healthy provider data ecosystem? So again, the answers are yes, no, and then type in the comment box of maybe why you may disagree, and yes, but other vision elements should be considered and considered and and please um, if you have any recommendations please type that in in the comments box. So with that I'm going to open the poll. So if you have any comments please um, um, or you know, where it says type in why you dis disagree or type in recommendations please do that by um, submitting a comment in the comment box on the GoToWebinar panel. And I'm going to give the poll about another 30 seconds. All right, thank you. I'm going to close the poll and launch the results. So as you can see, about 83% of the audience agreed with the vision articulated by the alliance, and then about 16% um, agreed with the vision but um, maybe had some recommendations as to some other vision elements and about 1% um, indicated that they disagree. And like and again, we'll, we can open the line up for discussion towards the end of the call. And um, you know, if you have any, like as I told mentioned earlier, if you would like to kind of provide more substantive feedback, you know, we can always uh, arrange a call and facilitate discussion um, after the webinar. All right, so I'm going to turn the presentation over to Zig. Thank you, Tom. Hi, everyone. So I'm going to review the five key strategies for achieving the Alliance's vision of a healthy provider data ecosystem. I'll spend a couple minutes kind of going through each one of them, and then there will be another question for you to vote on, and then some time for open discussion. A lot of different detail in here, so please you know, keep a, take a note if you'd like and ask any questions you have later on. Like I said, there were five key strategies for achieving the Alliance's vision of a healthy provider data, data ecosystem. They're related and interconnected to each other, as you'll see. The Alliance revisited the underlying causes of the issues in the provider data ecosystem to create a series of recommendations to guide a coordinated industry response. The five strategies threads are related and interconnected, as I said, but they're not tied sequentially for delivery. 
So we can work on all of these um, at the same time, and if not, a sequential way to think about these. These are a lot of these have to happen together for us to be successful. Next slide, please. So I'll go into the first key strategy. Industry support and commitment to action is critical to move forward. We cannot continue to try to do these at, in a siloed manner at the payers, at the providers, by, by the regulators. We have to come together and we have to commit to do it. The key first step to move forward is initiating leading organizations to formally voice public support on the principles and visions articulated in the roadmap. Once several leading organizations across the industry have made a public commitment to creating an industry alignment on provided data, the effort will proceed under its own momentum. Organizations must formally commit to participate in the governance structure of the initiative and provide support for the, its operations. The government, the government's body must identify specific early milestones and drive stakeholders commitment to, to meet those milestones. Building consensus on specific steps towards the industry vision and helping the stakeholders to make joint commitments to progress will be the most significant and critical task in the early stages of this effort. Next slide, please. Strategy number two. It's a tiered governance body must include cross-section, cross-sector representation, including providers and consumers. Only governments with broad stakeholder representation can develop the credibility with the providers and regulators necessary to achieve wide adoption, support, and success. It, this will be through a tiered approach. Tiers consist of, first, a central decision-making group that is inclusive and transparent in decision-making. Second, an advisory role for organizations based on directly participating as members will allow input and expertise to be integrated into the effort. And last, a third tier of observers will be comprised of those organizations who participate in the provider data ecosystem in an indirect manner, such as vendors. Consumers, patients, and providers must be included as full decision-making members. Active involvement of respected industry-leading organizations from each stakeholder type is necessary to influence industry alignment. A standing committee of providers and provider organizations must be formed to serve as the voice of the provider community. The committee will help guide the governance process overall, make formal recommendations, and provide consultation and feedback on governance proposals. Next slide, please. Strategy number three, the governing body must begin to establish standards that can align stakeholders on best practices. A first step for governance will be to develop common operating rules which can align stakeholders on best practices for collecting and exchanging provider data. The rules must be, I'm sorry, the rules should influence a, a simpler, more efficient, and more reliable provider data ecosystem. It will bring the industry to a single state of technology standards and resolve issues associated with uncoordinated sources of provider data. This will adopting existing or in development standard production by other bodies or by creating new standards within the committee. When necessary, building the technology infrastructure to implement and drive adoption of standards and common operating rules. Finally, the government should take an incremental approach, build a consensus for each step, avoid short-term approaches to long-term structural problems, and address the immediate business needs of participating stakeholders when possible. Next slide, please. Key strategy number four, regulators and other stakeholders must be included to ensure coordination, cooperation, and movement towards adoption of industry best practices. Federal and state regulators, regulators, as well as accreditation bodies, must be included in the governing body at the highest levels, either as members or advisors. This transparency will encourage credibility for the approaches developed for the industry. Formal relationships should be established with industry groups working on provider data standards to ensure that 
to the extent possible, existing or in development standards inform the decision making. Transparency with outside stakeholders and ensuring their advice is included in decision making will contribute to this goal. Through transparency and involvement, processes will encourage a shift of regulatory regimes to be more compatible with agreed upon industry standards. Regulators will have a greater understanding and buy into the process. Next slide, please. And strategy number five, measurement and tracking of key metrics and provider data quality, cost and value will encourage widespread adoption and support. The developing the ability to measure reductions in cost, effort, improved accuracy across the provider data ecosystem is key. That will quantify the value and benefits of industry standardization for all stakeholders, also encourage and spread industry participation. Significant resources must be devoted to identifying and tracking the cost, value, and usability associated with the provider data across the industry. Stakeholders who enter, modify, transmit, aggregate, and publish data need to have a reliable information as they must they have a reliable information and trust its accuracy. The governance must create reliable measures of data accuracy, audit the streams of data to gauge completeness, track improvements in data performance. Methods of evaluating and quantifying the value of accurate provider data to consumers and patients must be explored to establish a case for focused industry investment. Lastly, delivering value to our customers and patients is the goal of the vision. With that, I'll turn it back over to Tom for the last question. Thank you, Zig. Um, thanks for providing us an overview of the key strategies outlined in the roadmap. So for our next polling question, polling question number three, um, this question asks, uh, do you agree with the key strategies um, outlined by the Alliance for achieving a vision of, health, of a healthy provider data ecosystem? And again, um, the choices are yes, no, and yes, um, but other strategies should be considered. And again, um, if you um, have any recommendations or want to comment, you can do so by um, typing that in into the comment box on your webinar panel. So with that, I'm going to launch the third polling question. and um, leave it open for about 45 seconds to a minute for the audience to respond. All right, thank you for participating in um, this polling question. So I'm going to close the poll and share the results. So um, looking at the results, 82% uh, agree with the key strategies outlined by the Alliance for a vision of a healthy, a healthy provider data ecosystem. And about 15% uh, agree with the strategies but um, have recommendations for others, and 3% um, indicated no. So again, um, in a, and shortly in a little bit, we'll open the line for discussion on kind of uh, the roadmap in general. And I do have an, one more polling question before we open the line for discussion. And this polling question asks, um, do you think the roadmap principle, vision, and strategy adequately address provider data, data challenges experienced by stakeholders? And the answers are yes, the roadmap clearly articulates the path forward. Uh, number two, roadmap needs more clarity. 
Number three is the roadmap is incomplete or missing key industry considerations. Or number four is that there might be some other considerations that we need to uh, account for. So I'm going to leave the poll open for about 45 more seconds to give you um, and give you a chance to respond. All right, thanks for participating in the poll. So I'm going to close the poll and share the results and review. So looking at the results, about 69% of you believe that the roadmap clearly articulates the path forward, which is good to hear. 70% um, indicate that the roadmap needs more clarity. 10% uh, um, of you indicate that the roadmap is incomplete or missing key considerations. And 4% um, ha are, have indicated other so um, we look forward to kind of reviewing your comments and also, you know, we'll look feed that into the, some of the discussion for today. So with that, I'm going to pass the call over to Atul to kind of help with, guide the discussion. Great. So we can take questions and comments both uh, online and live. Um, Kyle, uh, can you just go through the instructions again for how to... Yep. So, uh, so, so to participate in today's discussion, you can either submit comments through the co comment panel like you've been doing for the polling questions, or you can raise your hand and we can open up the call can uh, I, for you, you, for you to speak questions? and um, talk about um, some of your questions and, um, and go through some of the recommendations you may have on the roadmap. All right, great. So maybe while we're waiting for folks to raise their hands, let's do a couple of the online questions and comments. Uh, Jade, can you go ahead and read the first one? Sure. So the first question we received is, how do other organizations that have not participated in the Provider Data Action Alliance um, participate moving forward? Great. And so our intent uh, uh, through these comment periods is to cast as wide a net as possible uh, to collect feedback and share with the Alliance uh, for uh, their review and, and eventual incorporation into the draft. Uh, if you'd like to speak with CAQH or with the Alliance members directly, uh, please uh, contact us at CAQH and we can help facilitate uh, that discussion. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, all perspectives are uh, contemplated as, as thoughtfully as possible. And then as we get into the next phases of this work, we'll look for all organizations, both the Alliance uh, it members and their respective uh, organizations, as well as those organizations that were not able to participate in the formation of the draft, uh, we look for all organizations uh, to uh, review the material and uh, determine if they can express support for uh, the vision and the strategies that are being proposed. Uh, but again, if uh, you do have feedback at, that you'd like to contribute, please do uh, speak up now or let us know offline. Great. Can we do uh, maybe one more online? Sure. So the next question ties to the Alliance's vision for a healthy provider data ecosystem. Um, and the question is, how do you maintain accuracy with more than one source of data? So uh, maybe can I uh, turn this question over to you, Zig? You talk about uh, some of the discussion we had around authoritative sources and some of the challenges, as well as uh, what we would need to do to address those going forward. Sure, Ethel. Um, yeah, I mean, you, whoever asked the question, you've hit it right on the head. Um, that's the challenge. And 3% of all data changes on a multi-basis. So 
that quickly gets out of date. Um, and the approach is really around having multiple point validation in place to allow us to look at requests or updates that are coming through, validate it off multiple points, and come up with the strongest recommendation that would be accurate. Um, will have 100% certainty? No, but it will certainly be more timely and it will certainly be um, the highest probability using multiple sources to build algorithms to understand what's the most likely piece of this. Um, and that's the really high level answer. There's other steps underneath that we, you know, we'll take when you have conflicts, but really that's it, is to look at multiple points, look at uh, clean history, for example, look at uh, what's being presented, look at the postal service, look at the contracting, look at the w, W9s, like look at all the different points and then evaluate the update that's been presented to you or the data presented to you to really understand the odds of it being valid and, and mathematically decide what the right decision is. Thanks, Nick. Uh, my focus, is there anything uh, you'd want to add? Just that the the concept and the vision of having both a centralization component as well as a, a slight federated model so that changes are made hopefully once into a centralized database and then would be spread to other aggregators or downstream users is the vision that we've outlined for how to achieve uh, consistency and accuracy in the data. It, it is a technical challenge, as Zig said, uh, to figure out how to get that done. That, that's right. So the um, the need to consolidate data sets is partly an operational cost issue, but also uh, to reduce confusion when there are multiple authoritative sources, potentially with conflicting uh, points of view on accuracy. Okay, um, maybe let's do uh, one. Uh, Live question. Can you yep. So it looks like um, a few of you have raised your hand. So um, I'm just going to go and unmute, go through the list. So it looks like Matthew Albright has your hand raised. So I'm going to unmute your line and uh, feel free to comment or ask a question. I don't have a question. All right. Go ahead, Matthew. Go ahead, Matthew. I, actually, I have no question. Can you hear me? I, I, I submit it, but I have, I've got no question. I'll pass. Okay. Thanks. Um, looks like Paul Maselik has a question, so I'm going to unmute your line. All right, go ahead, Paul. Paul, are you there? Paul, are you there? Okay, maybe let's do a let's do an uh, online question. Jade, can you read one of the ones that have come in through the chat? Sure. The next question um, is, if savings will take time to manifest through this effort, how will the cost of this process and implementation be addressed? That's right. So uh, I think we have a lot of work to do as a, as a group uh, to define in much more detail what exactly the next steps will be as we flesh out these strategies into more tactical actions. Uh, the, the issue of managing costs during that change, that period of change, is something that we have talked about as a group. Um, can I turn back over to our speakers and, and see uh, what comments you might have to share about that? Maybe, Michael, can you go first this time? Uh, sure. I, you know, that's another one of the um, points that we've considered, and it is, a, it is a challenge, and that's the work of the alliance um, that we need to do in the future. Um, we need to figure out an industry-led um, approach to transitioning us and, and getting us from where we are today to where we need to be in the future. And um, it's going to—I think it's going to be incumbent on, on on the industry to make some investments now with an ROI in the future that that we will get the reduction in costs that we plan for. But it's going to be a difficult a, a difficult process to get through and challenging. Michael, I would agree. Yeah, I would agree. It's an investment. I mean, you have to look at it that way. The ROI, short-term ROI, is is very weak. 
So if you have to look at it as an investment, this is just my opinion and, and the position that we've taken in my organization, but it's an investment. And that the ROI initially isn't there. But if you step back and you look at the cost in the whole system, the cost from the payer side, the provider side, the regulatory side, and you know, if we had all these costs and we had this pristine process of pristine data, we might say to ourselves, yeah, it's worth it, right? But we don't. We have all this cost and our, our outcome, our product is, is lackluster. It doesn't meet our needs. So yeah, we, I have to put forward the effort that it is an investment that will ultimately have longer term savings for us because once we're not all doing all the same updates, all the same data across the board and different platforms on different sizes, provider and payers and regulatory, um, the cost will be substantially less. But you have to have that vision. You have to have that organizational commitment for, you know, two, three years at least before we'll start seeing that. The group has talked a lot about ROI and the need to uh, make sure that the investments that are being made can produce uh, a tangible return, even if the timeline on those returns are not as immediate as we all would like. I think there was a lot of additional discussion around uh, the fact that we are all, in fact, already making investments. So to some extent, uh, there is an opportunity to align the work that's already in, uh, in flight uh, to get a, I guess, a, to accomplish a broader goal uh, that is more sustainable and uh, can address the variety of uh, needs out there, not just the regulatory compliance needs that are driving many to ask today. Um, and then uh, the, the threat around regulatory compliance creates a real um, uh, challenge uh, as we look at, look at dealing with these costs as uh, stakeholders have to, to deal with the reality of our environment today. And it was for that reason that uh, we felt as a group that it was critically important that regulators play a, a role, at least as advisors, uh, in the form formation of this vision and uh, the roadmap to get there uh, to make sure that we're moving with common purpose. Jay, can we take one more question? Sure. Um, and this isn't so much a, a question as a statement that I'd, I'd appreciate Mike and Zig's feedback on. Um, one of the commenters said that there is no mention of a duty or obligation of the provider to participate or submit accurate and timely data. I'd appreciate your thoughts on how the Alliance weighed the role of the provider um, in, in your vision. Michael, I'll go first, then I'll hand it over to you. Um, you know, it's a partnership. So whoever made that comment is, is, is I think, on the right track. That there, there's a, in the Alliance, we clearly understand that it's a partnership. So when I hear the words like, compelling or, or, you know, contractually driving, that's not where we want the lines to go. We want the lines to show value to the providers so they understand. They won't be being called by every health plan every quarter to validate their data. Um, they won't have to submit it multiple places. So there, we need to show the value to the providers. And we believe in, in what I've, the conversation I've heard is if we can make it in a way that is an advantage to the providers, we won't have to compel them to use it. They'll want to use it. Yeah, Zig, I wholeheartedly agree. And, you know, the Alliance wasn't necessarily trying to remove the duty or obligation on providers to report the data. It's there. Um, but right now, in, in the current environment, providers feel like they're under siege because of all the changes that are going on in the industry. And their time should be spent caring for their patients not making continuous changes to multiple data sets that support industry processes. We want to design an ecosystem where providers can make the change once, and that change will be reflected in all of the systems that need to have that data element present. And, and it is certainly a partnership. Um, one of the most important principles that we have, um, one of the issues that we have is that providers have not been engaged in this kind of a dialogue. And the principle is that providers need to be at the table to help guide the industry solution. 
Great. Thanks, Zig and Michael. Um, let's uh, transition to the last few slides here. Um, as, as you can see up on the screen, we are, again, looking for feedback. Uh, the discussion uh, today, as well as the comments and questions that were submitted that we have not been able to address yet, will all be uh, uh, shared with the Alliance, and uh, we will look for their guidance on how best to incorporate. Um, and as you can see, we do have uh, the full draft of the white of the roadmap, excuse me, uh, posted online and available for review and comment uh, through the end of the month. And then, as as I've said already, um, if you prefer to discuss your feedback, uh, please reach out to us at CAQH, and we'll help coordinate. Um, so as we close here, uh, the last uh, set of discussion is uh, to determine if um, uh, we've laid out enough of a vision uh, that can be eventually supported by you and your respective organizations as well as the industry as a whole. Okay. Um, the, uh, go ahead and, there you go, great. And so uh, we, we do know and in, in looking at some of the comments that have been submitted that uh, many more details are needed before you can uh, really understand uh, what would be asked of you and your organization to support. What we're looking for right now, or in the near future once this final uh, roadmap is published, is uh, the first round of support so we can start to begin to work collectively on those details. What that means for us for at this point is uh, to seek uh, organizations that can publicly express support uh, for both the principles and the vision that's described in the roadmap. Uh, and then importantly, uh, reflect that support in terms of active participation in uh, expanding the, the group of individuals working on the details. Uh, a lot of work is needed uh, to flesh out the details here, but if this is a vision that we collectively can uh, get behind, think that uh, the shared efforts across the industry can help uh, bring this to reality. And then at some point in the future, uh, we would look for organizations uh, to commit to actually uh, participate in those activities uh, to, to execute or deliver the vision, uh, but that would be an, an exercise for the future once the vision has been uh, fully fleshed out to everybody's satisfaction. So with that, let's go to our last polling question, Taha. <clears throat> so our last polling question asks, um, based on your experience and understanding of today's discussion, do you think your organization would be supportive of the provider data roadmap? And the choices are kind of rating your levels of support. So choices are very likely to support, somewhat likely to support, not likely to support, very unlikely to support, and um, indication that your organization can't support documents like the roadmap. So I'm going to open the poll and um, have you take about 45 seconds to a minute to, come to respond. So I'm going to give it about 10 more seconds and I'll close the poll. All right, thank you for participating in the poll and I'm going to share the results. So it looks like about 47% of you um, have indicated that you would be very likely to support a document like the roadmap. 45% uh, of you indicated that you would somewhat likely to support the roadmap. 6% um, said there you would not likely to support. So um, for those of you, we um, would love to hear your feedback and um, comments on that. And 1% and indicated that you would be very likely to support. And again, um, we would love to hear your um, comments and feedback on 
explanation of why and how we can get the roadmap to um, kind of get that full picture, industry picture. So I'm gonna. And again, uh, we will uh, take a couple more questions, both uh, submitted online uh, through the, the question feature. And if we have time, uh, you can also raise your hand and maybe take something live as well. Um, in the uh, while we're waiting for folks to raise their hand, uh, let's do maybe one more um, uh, online question. Um, So we do we do have one question from um, the participants related to the regulatory environment. Um, given the increasing complexity of state regulations as well as federal, um, how does the alliance envision regulators being um, brought to the table in a in a, an aligned stance manner? Mike or Zig, would you like to? Take on that question. Sure. Uh, this is Michael. Uh, part of the vision uh, is that regulators um, at the federal and state level need to be included. But in order for this to be uh, something that would be ongoing and sustainable, we believe that that uh, roadmap needs to be industry led. Um, if you recall, we have several tiered levels of participation. And regulators uh, would be able would be able to and welcome to participate um, in the various levels uh, that we outlined in the roadmap. Yeah, this is Zig. So I would just add on that. I mean, the transparency is the key here. Um, one of the challenges challenges many of us have that are in multiple states are how we manage different regulatory um, constraints and regulations. So being very transparent we believe will really help us with the regulatory and, and licensure boards so they can help us understand and they can understand what's, what standards are appropriate and the strategies we can work on together. So really transparency is the key there um, and having them involved, as Michael said, in multiple tiers of the conversation. Great. Yep. Thanks, Nick. Um Let's do one last question. Um, Taha, can you pick yep. one more, please? Yep. So uh, this question is <coughs> asked, um, when do you anticipate this new Alliance Roadmap to go into effect, and when do you expect that organizations could start noticing um, the changes that the Roadmap has been um, articulating? So I, I think the point that the uh, commenter is making here is we need this as soon as possible. Uh, so our intent is to First, galvanize support for the vision because there is a fair amount of work needed uh, both to work uh, to spell out the details as well as uh, put in place the governance and other operating structures uh, to bring this vision to reality. I think as we uh, look for organizational support for that vision uh, over the next couple of months, uh, the speed at which that support is is cultivated uh, will, I think, in a large way determine how quickly the next steps should be uh, pursued. Um, maybe if we can just close, Zig and Michael, with some perspective from your organizations, how how would you characterize urgency and uh, and the need to move forward uh, from your your vantage points? Yeah, I'll, I'll start, Michael. This is Zig. Um, yeah, I mean we're actively engaged. Um, you know, we're looking for partners and, and an industry leading initiative. We at Cigna have been pursuing this um, with a great deal of resources and time and effort for several years. And the conclusion that I came to, I won't speak for Cigna, but I'll speak for myself, was it's not possible for us to do it by ourselves. So we have the, we have the only possible viable option is to come together as an industry. And with the regulatory environment we're in, plus the cost environment we're in, there's a high degree of urgency uh, at Cigna. Michael? And from, from my perspective, the, the need is immediate to have some standardization in fundamental provider data that is used in transactions across the, the industry. 
uh, with the increasing cost pressures on um, providers of all types, health systems, hospitals, multi-specialty group practices, we need to take um, administrative expense out so that we can focus all of our resources on, on care of populations. So the sooner we can get this um, implemented and achieve our goal, the better. Thanks, Michael. And with that, it looks like we're out of time. And um, I'd like to thank um, both the audience members for listening in and participating in uh, providing feedback and comments on the roadmap document through the polling questions and Q&A. And also like to thank our speakers, uh, Zig, Michael, and Atul for providing us some valuable insight in the discussion on the roadmap. Um, and I'd like to end on the note that um, for those of you that um, that the slides will be available and, and a recording will be posted on the CAQH website within one to two business days. And also, you, for those that uh, attended, you should be also getting an email of the slides. So with that, um, thank you for attending today's session. Have, have a great day. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you.